Alright, Lady Ada, what's this? Okay. Sometimes I have a lot of faith in humanity. And then sometimes I get products that have center negative. So you see here I actually even like use some Sharpie marker to really highlight this. The outer connector is positive and the center is negative, which is like opposite the 99.9% .9 of DC connectors. So like mm. if you look at uh, this is like a 12 volt power supply and I've got my multimeter here. And if I check this, like I said, you know, 99% of products is center positive 12 volts ish. But then what's this? This, this is a magical cable. It does exactly what you think. It's a flippy floppy reversey poppy. So now when you check the polarity, it's center negative. Okay. Very handy little cable. So I just finished testing it. So I'm going to try to get into the shop. Okay, hey, Lady Ada, what is this? This is a USB Trinky, which has a temperature and humidity sensor. And this is a Cutie Pie board with a USB host BFF attached. And then if I plug this in and on the computer, you'll see that I'm getting the USB serial data from USB host um, through to the Cutie Pie SAMD21. So if you look over here, the way this is working is a Cutie Pie board, which is a USB device, is plugged into this on the go cable, um, into this micro B port on the um, BFF board. And then this is a USB host chip that does serial, sorry, SPI to USB host. It's called the Max 3421E. And what this does is allow something that only has one USB port to basically have a second USB port. Um, this is a great demo because it just reads the serial data from here and then pipes it back out over USB, but it tests enumeration, it tests that it found the CDC device, uh, and you can see the little LED telling me when data is being transmitted. Um, so this is kind of fun. It could be a really good little board. Uh, you can solder it directly onto the back to save some space, and this will give you basically two USB ports. You can do USB host to device translation or conversion. That could be good for accessibility projects or you know, keyboard mods, etc. Um, this is almost working. One little fix I have to do for the power supply, and then I can get this into the shop. All right, Lady Ada, what's this? Okay, so during the part shortage, you know, microchips sort of required that we book a year or two's worth of inventory. And so I ended up buying a lot of SAMD21s because we use a lot of SAMD21s. But then they shipped me like two years worth all at once. So now I've got like 50,000 SAMD21s. So you're going to see a lot of SAMD21 products coming out. Like this Trinky. This is the board, the SAMD21E. Plugs into USB and it can run CircuitPython or Arduino or even MicroPython. And on the end here, you see this nice cutout with an SHT45. That's a precision temperature and humidity sensor. Oh, wait. Hold on. There you go. Temperature and humidity. And there's also a capacitive touch, a little NeoPixel, and a reset button. And uh, this is the tester. So uh, this is a Pico board that is uh, able to program a SAMD21. It does it in about like five seconds. Ding dong. And test complete. All right, and this is ready to go into the shop. So it sends uh, humidity, temperature, and the serial number of the sensor out over CSV. So it's going to be perfect for people who just want to like get that data in uh, to do data analysis or environmental sensing stuff. Uh, so nice little, nice little dev board. All right, later, what is this? OK, I'm testing out this new board I designed. This is a 38 kilohertz IR receiving decoder board. So what this has is um, two IR decoder chips, like one wide angle and one like straight up and down. It's basically the same as these kind of like breadboard IR decoders. Um, they look for 38 kilohertz IR remote signal and then they decode it. And what's important is they're actually kind of designed with the gain and the decoding logic to handle uh, remote control specifically. So you can see when I press this remote button, um, it's telling me, okay, I've got some signal. And then if you look at the Arduino output, um, I'm seeing NEC uh, data being decoded. So uh, this is good. Um, this is working and it should be a lot easier to mount. And of course, having two uh, selectable decoders means uh, you don't have to worry about bending um, this sort of sensor up and down. And I like that it tells you when it's getting signal as well. Uh, from the IR LED. So this is ready to go. All right, Lady Ada, what is this? Okay. I just showed off my 38 kilohertz IR decoder, and this takes remote control messages that are encoded in 38 kilohertz infrared and decodes them. And this is a different breakout board. This is the TSSP7738 demodulator. So it's the difference between a decoder and a demodulator. Well, if you look at the oscilloscope over there, you'll see the difference. 
So on the bottom, you see a 38 kilohertz on off, you know, pulse. Basically, I'm sending 38 kilohertz IR and then I stop for 10 milliseconds on and off. And the demodulator can very easily detect when there is 38 kilohertz IR or not. But if I change this for a decoder, which is looking for infrared signals, it has like internal logic that's looking for valid infrared. So what happens is when I plug this in, you'll see it does detect it, but then it eventually disappears. I'll quickly plug it in and plug it. Oh, can you uh, look at this? Go. Yeah. So you'll see it's like, oh, yeah, I found the signal. But then it the internal logic is like, oh, wait, that's not a valid infrared signal. And it turns off. So this is good for infrared remote signals, but it's not good for just detecting uh, 38 kilohertz IR in general. For that, you need a demodulator, which could be used for non-infrared remote projects that still want to do infrared signaling. Okay, cool. What are these? Okay, so this is the board I just showed off in that video. So it's, this is the IR demodulator. doesn't have any smarts to it. All it does is look for 38 kilohertz uh, infrared and then gives you the envelope output. So good for like, um, some people use this for like proximity or distance sensing or like other kind of weird sensing that's not, that uses a modulated IR but doesn't use infrared remote controls. Uh, and this is, you know, we showed off this chip on um, the great search. I was looking for precision humidity and temperature sensors. And this is like incredibly high precision temperature humidity sensor that from uh, TI, the HDC 30, 21 and 20. I sent me a little breakout board for it. Um, this is that PWM. I think I talked about this a couple weeks ago. I designed a little PWM output board because somebody was like, oh, I just need to generate like a 250 hertz or 25 kilohertz signal. I actually got the prototype for these and I messed it up. I got to redesign this board. And then um, made a little mistake on this. So I'm also sending out new prototypes for it, but this is a USB host VFS. So you solder it onto the back of your QD Pi board and using the Max 3421E, it gives you uh, an extra USB host port. So it's top secret. It is. Very top, very secret.